I know that Whip It is the runaway Devo hit, and for hardcore Devo fans, it's it's a good song. But but I feel like there's just such a deeper connection and catalog to Devo's music. How did you feel about that being the the sort of top single? Well, you know, it's like part of our whole thing of coming to L.A. was, um, you know, we, we're older than you guys. So, so we, we were there for the shootings at Kent State, and we, we saw that rebellion doesn't work. You don't change things with the rebellion. And we looked around to see who does change things, and it was like Madison Avenue. It was like they talked people into eating things they shouldn't eat or driving stupid cars, or, and people do it with a smile. You know, they wear dumb clothes with a smile <laughs> because Madison <laughs> Avenue sells it to them. And we thought, okay, subversion, that's how you change things in this world. And we thought, what if we come out and get a record deal, you know, and and kind of make ourselves fit in with everything. That'd be a way to get our message to people because before that we were, it was, the band was really hardcore. We were kind of like a cross between um, Captain Beefheart and some 60s Italian sci-fi movie. And, and when we played on stage, people would just like, would, would just like, want us to get off stage you know we, we oh, wait. Would, is it true someone paid you guys to not play oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we were like but wait we got two more sets we have we have you know 20 more songs to play and they go no that's okay i think i think it's probably better if you leave now <laughs> and uh you know so so we thought well how do we how do we take what we do and do a subversive version of it and it was coming out here and so so as far as whip it is concerned the music started off um, I, I had a friend who played in Captain Beefheart's band. He was the drummer for Captain Beefheart at the time. And they, he lived with uh, Gina, th the drummer from the Go-Go's. So they, they had their drum kits in the basement at this house, like about a quarter mile away. And I'd go over and either, one of those two bands might be rehearsing. But, but I just had a little bedroom where I was writing music in. And I, um, I, went, I would go over, I didn't have a drum machine. So I would go over to the, to this place and I'd get them to play drum beats for me. And so I got this, I made up this drum beat and I got this guy to play it uh, uh, for me. And then I came back and started writing stuff on it. And then I wrote some lyrics and then I took it in to uh, show the band. And then Jerry said, wait a minute. And he came up with these other lyrics, uh, Whip It. And we liked them. And so, so it turned into Whip It. Uh, uh, I didn't think it was as you know like meaningful as gates of steel or freedom of choice i thought they told the message better of what we were talking about than than uh, uh whip it but the good thing about it was whip it some somebody that was programming uh, disco music at clubs put that on the list and so people started dancing to it so right. it was like so it's like of all things, it was people that were like in Miami that were like, like going to a, a disco <laughs> at night, going, "Wish it good," you know. Yeah. And, and, and it was it was like they were the people that pushed it out into the mainstream and got us, you know, helped us get on the mainstream. Yeah. And um, you know, my my feeling about that stuff is, you know, okay, so whip it the kind of song that uh, it, it kind of had nonsensical nursery rhyme lyrics kind of like um there was this writer that that uh jerry and i really liked called thomas pynchon and he would be writing these really complicated uh stories and then all of a sudden somebody would look out a window and they'd see two little kids playing a, a game on the sidewalk and it would be nonsense lyrics for the next you know page and a half and then they would go back into the serious story. Gravity's Rainbow is the book I'm talking about, but it, mm. it would go back into the story then. And uh, so we liked that kind of stuff. And, and um, it turned out to be kind of our, our kind of way to get in, yeah. you know, to, to work our way into the system. So for that, I, I, I think Whip It was an excellent song. But it wasn't the plan. It wasn't my, it, was, it just wasn't my, I thought it was a throwaway. Yeah. Probably, you know, it's like... I'd uh, say, but fast forward now, 
a lot of, not a lot, I, I, I don't know, I, <laughs> I assume a lot of newer generation kids have discovered Devo through Uncontrollable Urge. Yeah, because ironically, Uncontrollable Urge, because of ridiculousness, this... Oh, wow, yeah. Well, because of that, it played like a hundred billion times on Which uh, was actually MTV. written before Whip It, right? Yeah, by about three or four years mm -hmm. before that, yeah. That, I mean, that I feel like that when I talk to kids about you and Devo, that, that's the song that they know. Yeah, Rob just liked Uncontrollable Urge. He used to skate to it, so he wanted that to be his theme song. And oh, it's great. It's a yeah. good gateway 